is up, everybody? It's good to have you guys back. Where we are, are on Fury Craft, obviously, hence the name. And you got myself, Jack, and you got over in this rectangle, which is Ben. And this is the channel where we like to ram, rave, ramble about anything comic books, sci fi, movies in general, or just the culture of the time. And we also like to moan more than Piers Morgan after about 10 costas in the morning. So <laughs> this is going to be a bit more of a, a let loose video. So if any of you don't agree with these points, just remember that we are allowed our own opinions. We all have our individual opinions and we are allowed to state them. If we feel that something can be criticised or debated, that's exactly what we will do. And we'll do it constructively, but we'll also add in a bit of humour whilst taking the piss at the same time. So yes, what am I talking about? We're going to talk about the delightful age that we live in over the last few years of cancel culture. Where we have movies which are being cancelled because they weren't offensive back in the day, but because everybody's having a moan now, that they're suddenly offensive. Then we've got characters from Looney Tunes which are being cancelled as well, even though they had no problem with them at the time and they brought the kids up watching the same thing. And there is just a lot to cover as well as like movies which are somehow offensive, characters, or even just things that are existing in the real world now and we're going to talk about it all. And to be honest, where the hell do we start? I feel like I can start off with the first point and then we'll roll on from there. As we don't really have a structure, so we're just going to roll on from this, but we do have a lot of uh, points that we want to cover. And so what is cancel culture? Well, cancel culture, kind of, in basic terms, if I can describe it in like an urban dictionary kind of style, is that things which weren't offensive back in the day, things which maybe are not offensive at all, just because one person doesn't agree with the culture of today or a particular product or advertisement, then it is cancelled just because nobody wants to upset anybody because we have to pander to everybody's feelings because they got such thin skin. Everybody's got such thin skin these days and I'm sick of it. And to be honest, I hope that doctors eventually can prescribe a set of male genitalia for everybody because I think they need it. So if we could provide an example of the of the cancel culture, that's just my kind of opinions. I think it's just everybody's just gone too thin skinned nowadays and everybody just can't accept like even comedians a joke as a joke. They can't like comedians tell jokes and you go to comedians to laugh. That's kind of the point. And then you got movies, then you got characters and so on. There's a lot to cover, but that's just my very short opinion. So, Ben, yeah, cancel culture, this is a very big topic. Well, the thing is, cancel culture only has come about in the past 10 years because social media has begun, been this big bomb where basically you can write any opinion online, whether you like it, whether you don't like it, whether you agree, disagree, whatever. Everyone seems to put their opinions online and it just it seems to initiate some sort of world war three scenario where if you don't agree with said side you get hell from the other side and it just doesn't let up no but the but the main issue with cancel culture is the fact that it's all within the subtext like you could have one sentence written in one particular way but people can misread things because they either don't agree with the person in the first place or they just read things in a different way. I mean, I remember it was a few years back when Stephen Fry first started on Twitter and he, I think he was doing a post about the LGBT community because being a gay man, he's obviously quite close to it. Yes. I can't remember what the tweet was. It wasn't anything offensive. I think he was just proud to be able to say that he was a gay man and the society that we're in now is a bit more accepting of who he is and no, everyone else that's yeah, like him. Nothing, yeah, absolutely nothing wrong with that. And then all hell fucking broke loose. And I think it got to the point where he took like two months off Twitter because he just couldn't cope with the constant blip, blip, just people hounding him day after day for this one sodding tweet. Well, just because he's a homosexual man. No, I think it was just whatever it was that he tweeted was deemed too graphic. Perhaps it was just the fact that he was being flirty about a certain gay actor or something. I can't remember what it was, but oh. it was just the it was just the fact that they basically 
the way I can describe cancel culture is like they're leeches. They just suck out the like subtext out of the most bollocks thing. And it just makes no sense. Like you basically piss yourself off by getting wound up by your own idea. I think the key kind of word when it comes to cancel culture is that not not everybody, even though it seems to be a good portion of the general population, that now everybody just wants to live in a very sanitized world where there's no sense of humor. We all have to pick one side or the other, and there's no in between whatsoever. And like I always say on my other paranormal channel, debating is not hating. If something can be criticized in a constructive way, there is nothing wrong with that. That's the point of debating. But now we can't debate. We can't find a middle ground these days. We have to argue. But why? Why? And I think there's so many examples which we can get into. Especially, there's so many arguments that we're going to get into um, as this video goes on. But I just think we are just are living in such a sanitized world now, and I think it's only going to continue to get worse. Well, the thing is, like, the whole idea is the fact that everybody's opinion is meant to be the superior opinion because they have access to the internet, which basically means the entire world can see what you say. I think it's that arrogance that's what fuels most of their fire, and it just spreads from there onwards. I mean... So one of the many things that me and Jack tend to do when we do this, we like to do a bit of research beforehand. And today I wanted to try and mash up between articles about movies where there are scenes that obviously are deemed too graphic. Yeah, sure. And then there's also <coughs> a article that someone's wrote based on classic movies that aren't really that bad, but they just twist it because they just, don't like the movie. That's literally the whole comment between these movies. Like, if you don't like it, then that's fair enough. You, like, the thing is, I've always said, I can't remember who quoted it, but I love this quote. Opinions are like arseholes. Everyone's got one. Nobody needs to see it, but more often than not, it's full of shit. Yeah, well, like, there's even another quote as well. I can't remember who it was from, but it was just like, don't hate the art. You can hate the art, but don't hate the artist, you know? Yes. There's so... And everybody knows, like, on... Like, especially online, whereas, like, we do have a presence, obviously, from being here on Theorycraft, and I got my own channel, where I am a very opinionated sod, and I always state it's my own personal opinion, I'm allowed to have an opinion, and I'm not speaking for a population or a group. I'm speaking for myself. And lots of people maybe don't like my opinions, and that's fine. But I want to be able to have a middle ground. But the middle ground now is non-existent. So what do we do there? What do we do with that sanitized world? And there's a very good argument which I think can be made, especially in a recent case, uh, which is the first example here from me. So if we take a recent example, Pepe Le Pew, a very uh, iconic Looney Tunes character, has recently been cancelled, uh, somewhat recently been cancelled, because how do I describe it in terms which won't get us the boot from YouTube? Well, he was... Basically, very, he was... A very romantic skunk, shall we say. Well, he was French, so he was characterised as being an... Old, it was, mon chéri, oh, oh, I, oh, oh, I love you. Yeah. It, was, it was just a generic, like, over-the-top Frenchness. Like, it was just... This, that's the thing, like... Every country, I think, to a degree, has their own little essence to it. So it's like Italy's known for the arguing, the passion, the mamma mia sort of thing. And then you get the French where it's Paris, it's the city of love. And he's a very romantic character. Exactly. So it was literally just over like the way he was with the other female skunk that a load of women got really pissed off about. And just didn't like because they're worried that their kids were going to pick it up or pick up on that attitude and think, oh, it's OK to like somewhat force yourself on women, which obviously is not. It's okay. not. Obviously, no. It's not OK. But I think parents do have a responsibility to a point if their kids ask or even just to educate their kids that you don't do this. But they just expect their kids to know for some reason and they go out of their way. The like you parents, if you disagree with me, if you, you were watching that skunk throughout your childhood, and probably when you were raising your own children, right up to this point, you never had a problem with it for, say, 40-odd years or so. You never had a problem with it up to that point. 
But because everybody else is having a moan, you want to have a moan as well. If it wasn't a problem then, why is it a problem now? Shouldn't it have been a problem at the beginning when it first came about? No, because not everybody was so thin-skinned. And don't forget, if you're going to be moaning about a bloody skunk, just remember that you're the same parents buying your children GTA 5 for Christmas that is based on killing people and drugs and so forth. But the thing is, it was in the article you sent me about the Peppy the Pew. I believe the title something along the lines of, is Peppy the Pew the reason for rape culture? Because obviously the Paris, say 20 years, give or take, it's been a bit more commonplace because obviously we hear these sad stories. They're a lot more frequent. But the thing is, if that's the case, then what was the reasons before that character exists? Because it has been a crime for hundreds Obviously, of years yeah yeah so where was the excuse then like <laughs> like the thing is it's all well and good like blaming it on that but then not to make fun of the idea but the thing is kids have easier access to get to sexualized media say porn and other such things oh, yeah since like these parents are buying their kids iphones like laptops all kinds of stuff so if anything, it's not, you know, just kind of, oh, if the, the computer company, if Apple wanted to protect our children, they wouldn't put porn on our laptops. And it's just like, no, you freaking, even though I have heard people make that argument before. It's, but the thing is, it's down to you as a parent to teach your child the sentiment of a healthy relationship. But the irony is, it's these people that moan about it are the ones that probably have the most unstable relationships in the first place. Exactly. I mean, what you were saying just about like the adult entertainment industry and not ripping on the adult entertainment industry, you know, just because, you know, they're doing a job, whatever, you know, and it's down to like the actors or actresses, whatever. But when it comes to like these kids being able to access this kind of material, which, yeah, again, it's not good. It's not good, but it's down to the parents to have a responsibility. But the problem is, I suppose they sort of have a point there because... When it comes to that adult industry, like adult industry material, which is what I'll be calling it from now on, the adult entertainment industry, whereas, yes, these kids have access to it, but it doesn't teach you things about how to have a consensual relationship. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, the other thing as well is obviously a lot of soap operas, they also play on the idea of certain issues where people get a bit too forceful with said people. Yes. and. That's never been an issue of cancel culture. That's no. the one thing I find really iffy. If it's okay to have a live-action scene of someone basically being rogered from behind without consent, why is it an issue with a cartoon skunk being a, just a bit too over the top with a cat that looks slightly like a skunk? I, I don't get it. And even there's a... A somewhat recent one, which I can't remember if I sent it to you or not. It was on a Leon Lush video, which, by the way, if you haven't checked out Leon Lush, he does like to have a moan on his channel, but in a really funny comedic way. I encourage everybody to go watch Leon Lush right now. And uh, he gets a lot of flack from YouTube because YouTube, like, pretty much hates him, but he's got a brilliant channel. And he posts up a video about these kids. It was a TikTok trend, and then it got shut down very quickly. Um, and I think loads of these kids' accounts got deleted. Because these kids were, for some reason, there was a trend going around. They were dressing up like kids in the Holocaust. And they were saying about how their families like were burnt, executed and so on. And they were like saying, I just got beaten by a German soldier. And they had the torn face makeup and everything, the rags and all that. And they tried, loads of these kids tried to frame it as, we're bringing, or we're just raising awareness on this. Really? You don't think we know about the freaking Holocaust? The most famous, like... <laughs> the most famous genocide in history? You think we don't know about this? You don't think we were taught about this in school? Like, I are, are you for real? <laughs> I, the thing is, social media is probably the iffiest line to walk when it comes to any of this. It is a very thin tightrope, and for whatever reason, it's always the most drastic thing like that that seems to be the most in thing for anyone to do. I do not understand how 
in anyone's mind, they go, you know, for clout, I don't want to make something genuine. I don't want to put effort into it. I just want to basically traumatize people's minds by basically making it so much more obvious than it already was to the point where I I have no words for it. It's just ridiculous. It's just utter nonsense. Exactly. Exactly. This is... Oh, I have no real... It, there's very few points on this channel where I get to the point where I'm so frustrated or whatever <laughs> that I just literally have nothing to say. <laughs> but the thing is, it's like, how can you like justify dressing up like a Nazi? Like... You oh, can't, like, uh, unless it's like maybe for a like a film, like when you have like um, I don't know, shall we? Indiana have, Jones. In like Indiana Jones, when obviously I think the Indiana Jones did have Nazis in it at one point, didn't it? Yes, I believe yeah. it was the second one. And is that what people were moaning over the fact they had Nazis in it? No. So this actually is a good segue to dive into this. Actually, is let's have a look. Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Yeah, what's this, the main problem? So the the article I've gone on is on Variety.com, where a lot of cancel culture stuff is on. Yeah. And basically, this person has said that Steven Spielberg and George Lucas are generally comp compassionate filmmakers, sorry, compassionate filmmakers, but this film went a little too far in trying to replicate the mood of 1930s action serials. Like those movies, the exotic... Villains are portrayed as primitive, bloodthirsty foreigners, resulting in negative and stereotypical depictions of Indian and Hindu customs. Okay, yeah, right, but... Uh, right, it's... so wh when was that film made again? This uh, was 1984. 1984, again, I'll bring up the point. Why are you people moaning now? Why weren't you moaning then? This is it. Like it's been nearly twenty years. This movie's been out. Why now? Like a lot of this list of movies that I've got here are all really highly claimed movies that are really beloved by a lot of people. But for whatever reason, they're just nitpicking certain things. But the thing is, it's an action movie. The yeah. first thing about any action movie is that it's always going to be over the top. It's always going to be bloodthirsty. Yeah. It's going to be. <laughs> I just remember people, it's a film, okay? It's a bloody film, for God's I mean, sake. If yeah, anything, this... you shouldn't try to cancel Indiana Jones. You should be trying to cancel 12 Years a Slave. If anything, if anything to me, that's more offensive. Well, yeah, there is that. I mean, the thing is, it's like, obviously in the Temple of Doom, you've got the scene where you've got the, one of the guys that goes, Kali Ma, and he's trying to take the heart out the chest. Right? Yeah. That was that was never deemed offensive. If anything, I think that's the most iconic scene out of all of that movie because it was such a very random scene that people would love. Yeah, and it's never been an issue. But the fact that some person that's in a turban that's a bit bloodthirsty because he's got a scimitar and they're having a fight, apparently that's deemed racist. I mean, it it could be racist if say like. Yeah, but uh, only thing is, it doesn't show that an entire race is like that. It doesn't... No. Oh, for God's sake. I know. I mean, so, another random thing that I came across, it was quite funny how I found out about this, is, you know, you got in The Simpsons, you got Apu, beloved character that everybody loves. Like, he's the most Hinduized character other than, say, Raj from Big Bang Theory. Because, again, it's a very slow process getting ethnic diversity. Yeah. When people found out who actually voiced Apu was not even a Hindu guy, because it's... Uh, I can never remember his name, but he's done loads of voice acting stuff. So many people kicked off that they wanted to get rid of him, but it was only a couple years ago that they revealed it. Exactly. But the point <laughs> is... What is that voice actor? Is that keyword actor? Keyword. It's an actor's job to put to portray a different character. And that means maybe putting on a costume, putting on a voice, changing their hair color. That's the point of being an actor. Otherwise, if it was always offensive, we wouldn't have 
actors. Well, more to the point, it, it, the argument is it's a voice actor. Like you are very, 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 very rarely going to find someone who's the spitting image of the said character they're voicing. If you let's say SpongeBob, there is no way you could find a talking sponge, a talking squid, or a talking crab that sounds exactly like that. So yes. why do people kick off about a guy that's not the same race as a guy that he's voicing? To be not honest, if people are kicking off at that, then I should be. Then it, obviously I won't because I've not got thin skin. I've actually and I've had, I've not got thin skin. All right, but I could and then in that case I could moan about James Masters who was in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. He's an American actor, but then I would go, oh no, it's offensive because he's American portraying a British person. Well, to be fair, it is quite terrible when a, an, a well it's not often that an american actor can pull off a british accent but that is a whole other argument for another day i mean it's just one of these things where what issue is it like a lot of the time i think there's like the do you remember when they did the movie about stephen hawking like he's like life before he became paralysed and how he got paralysed. Inspirational bloke, yeah. Yeah. So they got... There was a load of people, I remember uh, seeing some articles, that they got pissed off that they casted somebody who wasn't suffering the same illness as Stephen Hawking. But the thing is, like, Stephen Hawking didn't always have his illness. He, like... It crept over him over time. Yes. That's how an illness works. <laughs> Exactly. He wasn't always in a bloody wheelchair. But, but this is what I don't get, is people moan about like the so simple shit. And it's all fair enough. You, like There are some movie scenes that, rightly so, it should have been taken away, and they have. But there are certain things that you just don't question because it's part of the movie. Exactly, exactly. And you have to remember as well, for these older films, such as like maybe uh, 60s or 70s, I'll just pick that era, for example, that you may not agree with some of the material that was in those films at the time, but at the same time, that's the culture they were living in. I'm pretty sure this world, let's just say like we're living in 2021, somebody in 2050 could look back on, like go look back on um, 2021 and go, Oh, it was it's actually pretty tame here, but you know, back then, you know, even though we may think you know that that now we're trying to tame everything, but uh, with a lot of older films, that's the culture at the time. That's the times they were living in. And plus people, except if you're doing futuristic films like that, they can only portray what is happening within their own time period. They can't predict the bloody future. That's the pro Do you expect them to all be fortune tellers? Do you think they have fortune tellers when they're writing these film scripts? Are you for real? But that's the thing is that times have changed so much. over the, Even the past five years has changed a lot more than, say, the past ten years. But movies are always going to be so starkly different to where we watch them now because, obviously, the times have changed. I mean... I loved the classic Carry On movies. They were British comedy movies that were just... They were overly sexualised to a degree. They were a bit nonchalant. There was a lot of iffiness when you look back at them. But that's part of the time. That's how things were. That was the time back then. The time they were living in. I mean, there are so many things that I do not understand when it comes to people nitpicking at these so-called movies that are supposedly offensive but at the same point i mean there's a few modern movies they've nitpicked as well so me before you a very heart-wrenching movie which basically centers around a guy that's paraplegic and a woman who's depressed who's trying to get her life back together becomes his carer they sort of fall in love but because he doesn't deem the idea of Basically, he doesn't like the idea of dragging her down because he's paraplegic. He himself at, in the movie, which, yeah. again, yes, it is quite heart-wrenching and that's kind of sad with the movie. However, in this article, basically, they have nitpicked the idea that because he himself, 
they're basically digging out the idea that being disabled is a bad idea instead of being able to live with someone that's disabled. But the thing is, right... Wait, 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 wait. Hang on, hang on. Did I just hear those words leave your mouth correctly? Yeah, so... That being disabled is a bad idea. They Basically, they're moaning about the idea that the movie portrays that being having a disability is not easy for someone to be in a relationship with well, no, therefore sure for some people i'm pretty sure for some people it isn't you know i'm not dismissing that no no but they're basically making it out to be the idea that that's the reason why they themselves but it might not be though but the thing is it could be the fact that there is so i mean i've not mu- watched much of the movie but when you have said thoughts it's more than just one niggly thing like it's a number of things that can drive somebody to that point and it's all well and good saying well it's because they were disabled they thought it'd be better off to themselves so they don't drag down the person that loves them and they love them as well surely that's more traumatizing yeah you'd think so even even (laughs) there's other things such as let's take comedians for example like me I think I, I I will admit I've got a very dark sense of humour. I'm not going to go to the extent of that dark sense of humour here because I'm pretty sure I'll get a lot of hate for it. But understand, it's not that I laugh at particular jokes because I hate that culture or I hate these people, whatever, because I really don't. I don't really have a problem with anybody or anything as long as it doesn't affect me or whatever. Then, you know, just go about your life, whatever. Uh, but I have a dark sense of humour because that's just what I find funny, some things. Um, like Frankie Boyle, for example, one of my sort of favorite comedians, and he says some things I find really funny. He says some things that I agree with. Sometimes he says stuff that I do not agree with, but you know what? I can accept it for what it is, and I can just move on from that. It's like when you see an offensive comment or, or you see something online that maybe offends you, there's a very simple way to avoid it. Do you know what you do? Put your thumb on the screen. And just skim by it, just scroll, keep scrolling, and then problem's gone. But the thing is, it's such a simple solution, but yet people just love to put their point across. I mean, that's why we're here, but there is different ways of coping with it. I mean, I remember when Ricky Gervais, he started a series basically... He's an atheist. He doesn't believe in the idea of God. I was going to get onto this. Yeah, and he got so much flack from that series because most of it was Americans. Because I'm sorry, America, but you are batshit frigging crazy when it comes to religion. Okay, like I don't believe in God. If there is a God, then why the hell does he create so much chaos and so much scrutiny for everyone else to suffer through? Okay. Anyway, so. The whole thing is like, we're all entitled to this opinion, whether or not we believe they exist, whether or not they don't. But I've never known any other religion to hate somebody to not believe in their religion. It's only down to American Christians that go so nuts about it. Well, yeah, it's just like, cause, um, because like, I have quite a, um, a diverse family, whereas me, I was never raised in a religious household, nothing like that. I wasn't brought up like that. You know, I was brought up not really believing in anything. I sort of discovered things on my own, but it's only because of what I do on my other channel with the paranormal. I'm like agnostic in a way. Mm-hmm. I'm open to the idea of things, but when it comes to things such as like God and things like that, I'm the kind of person I have to see proof. Like mm-hmm. if I see it, touch it, feel it, whatever, it's document. I, if I can have the proof i will believe but i can't just blindly believe all right and that's just my opinion and it's like uh ricky gervais he says something which a lot of atheists like would a lot of atheists think if somebody like from a religion says god is real and he asks the question can you prove that they say no and he goes well i don't believe you that's a fair argument because there isn't really any proof so He's not really being offensive. He's just stating something that's fact. But the thing is, is like it's got such a hold on people, Christianity, especially in America, where they just don't want to let go of that delusion. Like it's all well and good saying that it helps them or whatever, but how does it help them? Like there is no genuine proof that anything. Like I could believe in the flying spaghetti monster. 
like Which there some is people do. Yeah, the Pacifarians. My sister, to a degree, was tempted to become one, but we jokingly said no. But the thing is, it's that argument is the fact that if you need something to believe in to keep you going, then surely it's your own belief that's keeping you going, not the belief itself, if that makes any sense. Yeah, although when it comes to religion, as long as it, for me, if it helps people's mental health, if it helps them stay on a good track in life, be to be nice to people, not forcing religion down their throats or anything like that, I've got no issue with that. Carry on. But then when people get offended by stuff like that, by saying, oh, he said something about God doesn't exist and that's offensive to me. Well, should something be like, shouldn't something be more offensive in this case where, and I'm not stating which religions, because I don't want to target anybody, I'm not stating the religions, but there is religions around the world that if you do not conform to their religion, you are basically executed or exiled from wherever you're from and exiled from your family and cut off just because you do not believe in what they believe in. How disgusting is that? It's just, it's bonkers but that's, then that's basically the that's basically the equivalent of saying you know just like right i right i like i love marvel and somebody comes to me and says i don't like marvel i like dc and i decide to pop them that's basically almost the same thing just because they don't yeah. believe in what i believe in then i will just do away with them and that makes th there's no sense in that that's just pure that's just plain horrible but that's the thing is like that's, I think, how we got to this point today with cancel culture is basically people being offended by fiction. That's the, that's the saddest thing of all. I mean, you don't get this issue with scientists. Like, It's a very rare chance where you have people really argue against science. And more often than not, it helps the cause. But it never helps the cause when you're like, ranting about fiction. Like... It, it, fiction is just like a ball of liquid that's just constantly flushing. Well, it just obviously, this... I know we get really passionate about films and so on, but it's just to a point you can argue to it. But it's when people, I'll take the example of like Shadowversity, which is one of my favorite channels about like medieval weapons and all that kind of stuff, but tries to take like science fiction weapons and so on, or science fiction universes and puts them into the real world. And he goes, Oh, but this doesn't work, and this wouldn't work, and that wouldn't work. Yeah, but here's the thing. You, all your arguments are invalid because you're moaning about something which does not exist. So mm -hmm. your argument is invalid. I mean, the thing is, it's just, it's insane the things that people want to nitpick. I mean, here's another thing on this ver uh, Variety article, okay? So they've nitpicked Forrest Gump. Now, can you think of anything wrong with Forrest Gump at all, off the top of your head? Like, it is... I have watched this film so many times, and I don't get why it's offensive. So, here's a list of things that they apparently find con condescending, is apparently people with disability, Vietnam vets, and people with AIDS, among if others... anything... It shows what disabled people can do with their lives. Yeah. It shows, like, it's an inspirational thing. <laughs> well, you've got a guy that's got mental disability, which well, take basically... Eddie the Eagle, for example. Why are people moaning about Eddie the Eagle? I don't know. But Ooh. Forrest Gump was mentally handicapped, but his best friend was in a wheelchair. Like, if that doesn't show the capabilities of someone that's disabled to any length... I don't understand what is the issue. But exactly. this, is, this is where this whole article starts spiralling out of control, okay? So, among others, it's actually hostile to protesters, activists, and counterculture, funny enough, because this is a cancel culture moan. As a bonus, lovable title character, Nathan Bedford Forrest was named after his grandfather, the first Grand High Wizard of the KKK. What the fudge has that got to do with the rest of the sodding movie? Yeah, but there's... And also, there was another real KKK member whose last name was Kelly. That is pretty much me going on a basis of saying, oh, somebody who has no relation to that whatsoever, no relation to that cult, has the last name Kelly, and I hate them just because they got the same name. That yeah. makes bugger all sense. But this is what I don't get about this article. It is just nonsense. They're cherry-picking... 
just the smallest little inconveniences of a movie. But what did you say about the protests again? Apparently, uh, it's actually hostile to protesters, activists, and counterculture. Basically, the hippies. If you remember, it was those hippies that were protesting against the Vietnam War. He was part of the Vietnam War, and Jedi was one of the hippies. But and the thing is with protests, it's not so much down to the police, like shutting down protests, it's down to you, the protesters, because there's such a thing as peaceful protests where there's no violence, there's no hating, there's no shouting, whatever, they're just getting their point across, there's nothing wrong with peaceful protests. But when you start lobbing stones, shooting people and so on, then, you know... Work this is out for yourself. But this is it. It's the fact that there are times where protests do go over the top. Yes, obviously. Yeah. And it's gotten worse over the past five years easily. Like there are time and time again, you get protests in America where you get to the point where people get attacked by fire hoses because it's like they pressure wash them out the way, mm. and they go, "Oh, well, this is not fair. Like there was no need for this." But the, you only see part of the argument. You don't yeah. realise who when, starts it. When they go, oh, it's police brutality. Yeah, but who were the ones who started the protest in the first place? But it, again, it, all of this is the, a very tight that's walk to that's line. That's basically me having an argument with the air. I go to throw a punch in somebody's face and then I make the argument, oh, yeah, I threw a punch at the air, but they were stood in my way. Yes, essentially. It's it just, it's beggar's belief that you can nitpick at a, such a glorious movie. I mean, apparently it's also offensive to people with AIDS. Can you think as to why it's offensive at all? I can't think of anything. The, the only relevance about that is the fact that Jenai gets AIDS and that's how she dies. She basically, she shags so many people while she's a hippie. She gets AIDS and then so she goes for forest and then she gets pregnant. But she can't carry the bar- she can't continue on after the baby is born. Hence, why Forrest is the dad at the end of the movie. Where is the offense of AIDS? Like seriously, where is the offense? No, because there's even there was an argument that I saw about the Green Mile, which is one of my favorite films of all time. It's a it it makes me. It is a heart wrenching movie. I bore my eyes out every time. See, so have John Coffey, who was played by uh, Michael Clark Duncan, wonderful actor. It's a shame he's gone because he was bloody brilliant. And he was basically in the form of an angel on earth. And, um, you know, he helped, you know, and basically he was framed for the death of two little girls and he was bound to be executed in the electric chair. And it's just the way he was like, it was because of the language that was used, such as the N word and Mm -hmm. things like that and calling him racial slurs and so on. But it was depicted in a time frame where racism was really prevalent in America. And it's mm-hmm. depicted within that time frame. But when then people decide to moan about the Green Mile then because of all the racial slurs. But you have to understand, that was that's the when the t- they were living in at yeah. that time. But that's the thing is, I mean, there are certain movies where they do push it too far. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like you say, that's the time frame that it's set in. I mean, there's like there was a movie that came out, I think it was last year, called Get Out. That's a really racist movie, but yet that was classed as like the best movie of the year, I think. Basically, it all is based on the premise that this white family have learned the art of hypnotism to the point where they can transfer their own consciousness into other people's bodies, but they hate black people, but they use black people's bodies to transfer consciousness so they live longer. Huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm so confused. I know, no, it gets worse than that. So there was a deleted scene where, because it's in like a suburban street where it's full of like really white, rich people, he obviously breaks free from the cult and he basically murders his girlfriend because it's his girlfriend's family that's the whole reason behind this. And so he murders them to try and break free and he's driving down the road and he gets pulled over by a cop and then he gets sent to jail because he's black and like he's murdered someone white and it was like that's it that's that was one ending to the movie but the fact is like 
I'd find that more offensive and more racist because obviously it's like that's how sadly America is when it comes to these things. Like it's all one sided when it comes to a certain race. Yeah. But yet with the Green Mile, I don't see it racist. It's just a dark time of how things were. And that, I'd argue it's not even changed that much. But then when we had like leaders such as like Malcolm X and Malcolm X and Martin Luther King, who pushed so hard to get independence and equal rights for black people, which is amazing. And obviously, if they hadn't have done that, I don't know what time frame we'd be living in right now. But it's now nice to know that, you know, we're all on an equal basis. That's amazing. But the Green Mile was depicted in a time where black people did not have the same rights. That was the no. time frame it was set in, and that was what was happening at that time. It was it acceptable? Absolutely bloody not. Racism is never acceptable. But no. that was the time frame of what was happening at that time. But that's the thing is, I don't see how it was such an issue. I mean, there are some movie scenes where I'd argue... I'm glad that they got rid of. So, I mean, let's go to the point where we were talking about being too sexualized. Okay, so Horrible Bosses 2. Jennifer Aniston is one of the said horrible bosses within it, who is a doctor to, I believe, either a med student or nurse. And basically, she's an absolute bitch. I've not watched it, but that's the whole premise behind it, is it's Horrible Bosses, the name says it all. But there was a scene where supposedly Jennifer Aniston's character was supposed to hmm, on the guy, basically force herself on him and get as you do. But they got rid of that scene. And while it's a good idea to get rid of said scene, it's bizarre that if it's a woman that's in the position of power for that scenario, it's not okay. But there are so many soap operas in the UK, like Coronation Street, EastEnders, Hollyoaks, that have that scenario at least once a month, and it's always the man in the position of power on said woman. Yeah, well, I, the argument that I can make against that, and this does happen in the real world, is that women do, unfortunately, do women get abused by like their spouses, boyfriends, whatever? Yes, of course that happens. But it happens just the same amount to men. It's yep. just men don't speak about it as much. Because I think a lot of it can be down to the social stigma and how we've been socially conditioned through these freaking series such as Love Island, all that mm. kind of crap where men are depicted as being strong, you know, mm. handsome, good looking, and like hard nuts, basically. But where it presents that false idea. And then when you because when you hear about a woman you know being whatever by a man you know obviously it's horrible but then when it's the other way round you don't hear about it as much no and it as i said already it's one of these things where it can be okay for one side to be portrayed but not the other and it's a very iffy way to look at things but the same way, same thing that can happen to a woman could happen to a man. Yeah. And it does happen. I mean, at the end of the day, I think cancel culture has basically made any flipping film toxic depending on their own opinion. There are said films that do take things a bit too far, but at the same point, that's what movies are designed to do. They're meant to be fiction, and I mean, there was a movie I watched uh, with a couple of other friends of mine a few months back, which was based on true events that was twisted to a degree. But basically, a group of Americans crash landed in, uh, well, got stranded in a for uh, some sort of forest somewhere in Mexico, or maybe South Africa. I can't remember. Basically, they got they were trying to look down this tribe that were cannibals. Cannibal found them. They basically, yeah, it was really fucky. Wait, and um, are you talking about Cannibal Holocaust? I think it was. Yeah, is it where is like so the director for that film got arrested because he was accused of killing his actors? Something like that. But it's 
it was funded by um, some eco um, charity thing, like big corp. I can't remember what the fudge the name oh, was. No, I might be thinking of the wrong film. Um, but basically, it was a very gory movie where this entire team gets eaten bit by bit by the cannibals. And by the end of the movie, only one of them survives, but she gets used by the ah, tribe. I know the film now. I know the yeah. Film. And it's one of those things where I've yet to see anyone cancel culture that one because I find that a bit too extreme. Yeah. I mean, if you wonder, like, if anybody can be offended by that as going, you know, they're depicting this tribe in this way as being like cannibals, you know. But here's my argument to that. Maybe the reason is that cannibals from a certain tribe have not been depicted correctly is because when people try to find out, they've been bloody eaten. Yeah, yeah, that would make I a mean, fair sense. I mean, there's certain like things such as, like, you can't really moan about the film Apocalyptico because that film depicts the Mayan culture and how brutal they were thousands of years ago. And even up to, I think, when the Spanish came to... Mexico, I can't remember exactly when they came to Mexico. Um, I cannot remember. 16th, 17th, whatever. But mm. before the Spanish came to Mexico to introduce Christianity, and that's the reason why they speak Spanish there. And um, the Mayans, you know, when it shows how brutal they were and everything, how they lived their lives and so on, and what they did, and some of the things they did were bloody horrible. But the thing is, you weren't around at that time to be offended by that. And plus, you can take some kind of liberties because nobody truly knows what was happening around about that time. I mean, we have a rough idea, but you can have a bit of creative license in a way. But that's the thing, is people just try to rationalise so many things that obviously wouldn't be offensive back then because it was a different hierarchy of like life. Exactly. But, I mean, what else can we add to this today? Like, I don't think there is much more we can say other than the fact that there's so many films that people just want to nitpick for the sake of nitpicking because they just don't agree with it. There's a difference between agreeing with something and genuinely being offensive, I think. Well, I will just give an example from my own channel, which um, which obviously I don't talk about it as much because this is for theorycraft. This is why I'm here. This is something completely different. But I talk a lot about the paranormal and things that people deem as fact that really aren't. And I talk about that and I criticise arguments brutally. And I, I don't go after the people. I go after their arguments. And I go after what they're trying to present as fact when it's not. I go after that and I attack aggressively at the points to criticise it and debate it because there's nothing wrong with debating. But then I get labelled as uh, throwing hate at somebody and I get labelled as that I'm being such an ass and that people are going to unsubscribe and that they're going to report me because of things that I said. But understand this, I'm allowed my opinion. We all have an opinion and not everybody is going to agree with you. And you're going to have to accept that instead of having such thin skin. But I think the thing which has been lost is that I remember a time where all we had to worry about was suspicious people such as Mr. Savile. That was a very simple time back then. I remember that. And we weren't mm. offended all that much. But when it comes to like the whole cancel culture thing, we're all just too thin skinned now. The world's becoming so sanitized that eventually the films which you used to enjoy are going to be so boring because it's trying to not upset anybody. But people are going to be upset regardless, and it can be over the most petty little thing. And a lot of it, a lot of this cancel culture, I think you'll agree, Ben, is just pure pettiness. I think a lot of the time it's just basically they find a way to nitpick to try and get people to agree with them to then get internet fame for having said opinion. But at the same time, why is it a problem now? Exactly. Like, I feel, if they're like maybe complaining about a film which is 20 years old, why didn't you complain back then? Why didn't you complain five years after that? Why didn't you complain 10 years after that? 50, like 15 years after that? Why is it a problem now? Yeah, I couldn't agree more. But... I mean, the, the last point which I can make is that there are certain things which I do understand why people want 
cancelled. So let's go on the other side of the coin. Things like Family Guy and South Park can be quite controversial <laughs> at times. It can be. Oh, my goodness. And I think there's a bunch of episodes which uh, you have to go through a bit of a rabbit hole to find mm. on the internet because some of them are legitimately quite offensive. But then the same argument can be said for the comedian who has Ahmed, the... Um... Je- uh, the undead terrorist or something. Yeah, yeah that was that... Uh, Jeff Dunham. When he first came about, nobody had a problem with him. Like no. they found it funny because at the time it was obviously the Iraq War. We it was wartime humor, basically. Like it's, it was I the way I, things were. I thought, of, I thought of it as like trying to make because at the time, like the whole bin Osama bin Laden thing, he was still alive at the time, and like it was bloody horrible back then. We can all agree, even though it was like twenty eleven. We can all agree on that. No one's disagreeing with that. It was horrible. But I think, in a way, maybe he was just trying to make light out of a very hard situation, maybe. But that, that in a way, is what helped make a lot of people cope, I think, because people were so paranoid and so scared at the time because they didn't know what was going to happen next. With so much random destruction, we were on the knife edge trying to figure out where we were going to go next. Exactly. And yet, I think a lot of his stuff got taken off um, Netflix about last year or maybe the year before, just because people found it offensive. Yeah, but yeah, you have really offensive comedians such as, um, uh, I can't believe he's one of my favourite comedians and I forgot his name, Jim Jeffries, that's it. And he's a bloody funny Aussie comedian and he sometimes says things I don't agree with, but I can just get over it and it won't. I won't lose any sleep over it. But yeah, he says some stuff which is extremely offensive, yet has got probably four Netflix specials. Yeah. And yet he's not cancelled. Why? But again, I think more often than not, it's down to who you know in terms to keep yourself alive when it comes to all this cancel culture crap. But I just... It boggles my mind that we get to a point these days where... You just can't leave it alone. If you find it genuinely offensive, then do the smart thing. Find other people and make a petition. Do the smart way of taking things down. Don't just go, I don't like it. Nah, 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 nah. And that's like how the world has worked. Because one person finds it offensive and then the entire company goes, oh, fuck. And they're just going to panic. Exactly. It's just, yeah, I... I don't think there's much more we can add to today's moan, really. No, the only thing which I will add at the end is that, please understand, if you've got this far in the video, these are our own individual opinions, okay? We are allowed our own opinions, and we're allowed to criticise and debate back and forth. These are not specifically the views of a population or a whole group. These are just our individual opinions. So, whew, well, now we've got that out of the way, which I'm sure another cancel culture will come up uh, eventually. But... Apart from that, this is this week's one done. Thank you very much for everybody who's watching this in the future. So hello from the past, or goodbye, I should say. But next week will be Ben's topics. So what will that be? I want to cover one of my favourite 80s movies, The NeverEnding Story. It's oh, been so long since I've watched it. And I, because we've done a few fantasy movies... I'd love to go back over it and try to analyse it now as a grown-up to try and figure out how fucky it really is. Yeah, sure thing. But, yeah, there we go. So that's my topic for next week. Again, thanks for joining us. If you don't like our opinions, blame him. Sorry, blame him. What way am I no, pointing? I'm over here, mate. Yeah, You're sorry. Over there. Yeah, blame him. Not Sorry, me. He's looking at his mon- he's looking at his monitors right now. <laughs> yeah. Blame him. Not me. Blame him. But there we go. It's been two guys ranting and raving about cancel culture, which ironically we'll probably be cancelled about. But who knows? And again, stay safe, stay home, and we'll see you all soon. Yeah.